I'm going to take you guys through today's presentation. Um, I don't know, to be honest, if it's going to last the whole two hours. Um, we will go as long as it goes. And if it's before then, then it's before then. What can we do? I don't want to make y'all listen to me for two hours. Um, it's been a long week and I'm super tired. Okay, so um, I don't know where you guys are from. I don't know if you're from SAISD or if you're from an outside district, but welcome. Um, and let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see my slideshow. Again, you are taking part of um, our Ready Tech Go conference. It is our fifth annual that we are hosting it this year. It started off being in person, and then of course due to COVID, we switched over to virtual. And then um, this is our second year opening it up to surrounding districts within the state of Texas. So um, for us, it's you know an honor and a true pleasure to be able to share all of our expertise and our learning with you guys. Um, so glad to have you. Um, a little bit about us, our department and particularly, um, we are educational technology. So any technology based software or applications that are um, purchased and used within our district, we uh, do a lot of the training and support on. So our main focus and goal is to leverage technology um, in the classroom and to help with students academic uh, success and achievement overall. So um, making it very um, student centered, student created, student driven, um, and making sure that the device is not being used just kind of like as a babysitter or only taken out during uh, small groups or interventions or something like that. So we're really big on um, providing opportunities where the students are the creators and they're the ones that are, you know, they're um, creating and doing. So thank you again for joining us. Uh, for this particular session, I know with our department, um, everything uh, our teachers get um, ob observations ob observed using the t-test. So we always try to make some kind of connection to how this supports your t-test. So you could then in turn use it in your portfolio at the end of the year. And so for this particular, what I'm going to share with you kind of goes on planning, which would be the dimension 1.4, where you plan engageable flexibility flexible lessons that encourage higher order thinking, persistence and achievement. Now, a little background on how a filmmaker's journey was kind of developed. Um, SAIC hosts a student film festival every year. It's um, a really big project in which uh, students are allowed to submit films. We have a series of judges that review them. Then we have a um, movie screening where we I mean it's just kind of like you know the Academy Awards where we'll be like and the nominees are and so we have different categories and so we'll announce the top three nominees and then we announce the winner of every category they come up on stage they get a trophy um, they get their picture taken they get a certificate and then we do have overall winners in the categories of elementary middle school and high school and so the category winners for elementary, middle school, and high school um, actually receive grants. So the way that it works, every film that is submitted into our film festival, um, you have to have a teacher sponsor. So those grand prize, you know, kind of winners or those, you know, films are um, the, we work with our SEISD foundation. So those three, um, what is it called? my mind went blank, those three uh, sponsors and those students receive a grant for $1,000 so they can then turn around and purchase additional supplies needed to continue um, filmmaking in the future. So it's a really big thing. Um, so what we did this year is we kind of, I kicked off this filmmaker's journey, but it was more geared towards students. So it was a series of virtual workshops in which um, Students could log in uh, once a week and they can hear tips and tricks um, for quality movie production. Now in SAISD, we do have some specialty campuses. We have two high schools that actually specialize in media and film. 
So what I did is rather than me be the one talking and sharing these tips and tricks, I actually um, was able to get some of our high school filmmakers to um, help run these virtual workshops for our students. And they were the ones who provide provided the tips and tricks to the students because, you know, as you know, some students, they'll listen to you, but for, you know, the most part, it's more meaningful when they hear it coming from, you know, a kid or a student just like them. So that's kind of where a filmmaker's journey was developed and the purpose behind it, um, because we really wanted to be able to increase the amount of movies uh, submissions that we got in. So throughout this presentation, that's what I'm going to show you kind of like the tips and tricks. Um, if you're department, if you're not department, but if you're have something like a film festival, I would highly encourage it, especially if you um, if your district has uh, participates in the 92nd Newbury. So with us, we have um, a huge push for 92nd Newbury participation. So what's great is the students are kind of able to work on the film and they're able to submit it not only to the 92nd Newberry Film Festival, but they can also submit it to our film festival as well um, because we do have different categories. And so we'll go through the presentation and I'll actually show you a couple of student film examples. So um, this is kind of like the agenda. We'll go through five different stages of fi filmmaking. And then um, one of the slides or one of the sections, we're also going to talk about different production tools that could be used. So this is uh, dependent on the, um, the electronic device that you're using, whether it's a, um, a laptop or whether it's an iPad. So the first thing we're going to talk about is just the development, right? What type of film do you want to produce? So for us in particular, we have different categories um, in our film festival. I know for our, I don't want to say this wrong, so let me get the paper. Because um, I mean, of course, you can open it up, but then it would be kind of hard to judge. And when we go in and judge, we actually have rubrics per the different um, types of films. But so for our film festival, we have uh, in the elementary, we have the category of the book or story adaptation, which would be what is similar to like the 92nd Newberry. We also have a category of how to videos. So those are short. Um, I believe they're under three minute videos on how to do something. And then we also have newscasts where the students are able to create a newscast on a topic. Um, for middle school, our categories are usually a uh, fiction short film, uh, a how-to video, and then we have a PSAs. And then for high school, we have um, the categories of creating a documentary, fiction short film, how-to, and a PSA. And with all of those, they all have different time limits, um, like it can't exceed a certain amount of time. So uh, that's... So for our students, depending on what grade you're in, it determines which type of film you can submit. And you could submit into more than one category. But one thing that um, I encourage students to do is do something kind of like a March Madness bracket, something like what you're seeing here. So if you're not sure like what type of film you want to create, like jot down all your ideas and then, you know, kind of decide, okay, between option one and option two, which one do I really want to go with? Same thing for option three and four. Um, while keeping in mind, you know, do you have a certain budget? Are you going to need uh, additional people to support you? What kind of supplies or props are you going to need? And then finally leading up to, okay, this is the movie option that we want to go with. This is what we want to make. And so these interest brackets, you know, they're pretty easy. Um, I've used them in the past, especially like for Genius Hour when students were doing passion projects or something like that. So kind of helping students narrow down their idea for a film um, would be really helpful before they even get started. So for stage uh, two, you have the pre-production. So this is where we start going into storyboarding and developing a timeline. So within here, and I will um, share the link to this presentation with you in just a little bit, we do have the um, a moving planning a movie planning template, so I'll go ahead and click on it so you can see. So in here, you'll see kind of like a movie planner. What's the genre going to be? The topic, the style, um, 
you have kind of like the outline, what's happening, of course, writing their script. You have some um, quick notes on how to storyboard, like what is an upshot, two shots. And so then you have some blank templates of um, that you could use as well as a storyboard. So of course, these could always be printed out and given to the students, or if you're, um, if you want to go paperless, you can always send them out through your Google Classroom, through your Canvas, or you know, through Cami or whatever it is, uh, platform it is that you use. So, um, whoa. So then we have uh, the storyboard and script examples and templates. So here's some other um, examples that you could find. It was just something we were able to search in Google. So um, you have movie script storyboards. You have uh, some t TV commercial scripts. So if they're going to do like a PSA or something. Um, and so then, of course, you just have some additional information, how to make storyboard scripts, film script. The biggest thing with this is just kind of taking them through that process from start to finish, because we have so many students who just want to go straight into like, I'm just going to film. And then you have wasted hours where you were like, oh, I should have done this or, oh, I should have done that. And so really teaching them that process of going from script to screen is really important because it teaches them all those little tiny minute details that need to be um, taken into consideration in order to have a really nice polished uh, finished product. And so then here we have a from script. Business has been going great. We've grown so much so fast. This is a lesson from our Storyboarding Foundations course. So, to get the full an course. 11 minute video, I do not want to show you that because I would rather show you some of our student films so you guys could see um, that. So then, of course, if you'd want to show your students, you know, a video demonstrating what is storyboarding, um, here's a really cute My example of something that I would relate Look, to. He's getting away. Well, are you a so cop or not? Oh, showing yes, your yes. student how worry, is like. Uh, or the storyboard is six sections of the action or the movement of the movement. So, um, you didn't find it. It's like, because it took the more and more you have to have a plan before you go in. We got a 1031. So, although a movie is still made to an hour and a half, you know, to watch, it's, you know, it's much. Or, uh, sometimes even you know a year or two to actually develop it because of all the different things. So that's just a nice little example of um, a video demonstrating storyboarding. Do we have any other questions? Okay, so I will keep going. So then we have um, basically a timeline. So definitely getting your students to work on creating a timeline. So first and foremost, them deciding what type of film is it that they're wanting to make, especially taking into consideration, if, is it for a contest? Is it for a festival? What are the rules? What are the, um, the guidelines? So then, yes, I, miss, uh, Vada, I will share the presentation with you. Um, for sure. So then uh, you're going to definitely starting point, what type of film are you even trying to make? And then the second stage would be uh, working on your storyboard and the script before you begin even filming. So then, of course, the third one would be to gather all the materials and props that are going to be needed for the filming. So you have everything to go ready to go. And then, of course, your last final steps is you're rehearsing you're filming, you're editing, and then you're getting to the point where you're ready to share that final product with an outside audience. And of course, there's more steps in the timeline. This is just to give you guys a, a basic idea. So then, sorry, stage three would be um, production tools. So what software are you comfortable using? So these are some of the software tools that our students um, have access to within the district. So the way our district, our technology is provided uh, are kind of like the district model. 
yes, model. It's uh, kinder through second grade have iPads and third and up have um, Chromebooks or Dell laptops. And so we try to find the um, or purchase the software or the tools that work well with those particular grade bands and those particular devices. So um, you do have Adobe Creative Cloud, which was formerly known as Adobe Spark, which is a really simple program that the students are able to use and um, they really enjoy that one. It's pretty self-explanatory. Like, I mean, I think if you give them like 30 minutes to play around with it, they'll be able to create some kind of, you know, nice movie. And then of course, if you're using Apple and you're more familiar with, familiar with Apple um, products, you do have Apple Clips. So you have Apple Clips, um, and then of course you have iMovie. Um, one really cool one is Stop Motion Studio. Uh, that is a free app available within um, the Apple Store. And this one's a really cool one. Uh, a lot of the films that we see submitted, especially the book story adaptations, are stop motion. Um, so that's kind of like what um, a lot of our students turn into the 92nd Newberry Festival. So uh, Stop motion is really cool. That's like one of my favorite things to do. And then of course you have Wii Video. There is a free um, version of uh, Wii Video and it's not that much different than the purchased one. I think with the purchased, uh, with the paid version, I believe it provides more, um, like you have more access to like music and like stuff like that. And then it, I think it takes the watermark away, but um, the free version works just fine. So these are just a couple of um, EdTech production tools that are kind of like specific to our district that we use a lot. I'm sure you may have used some other ones that you would be more familiar with, but, um, but yes. So where, okay, yeah. So this is a student uh, video example. So this was actually, let's see, how to be kind. This is an elementary video and if I'm not mistaken the how to be kind was actually the one that took the top video for the elementary category so the sponsor and the student for this film um, got the thousand dollar grant to be able to purchase additional filming equipment so they can continue their journey um, also within the presentation because like I said I will share the slide deck with you uh, you will notice down here there's a link. It's um, Free Music Archive. It's a website with tons of free songs that you could use in videos that have already um, that you won't get uh, in trouble with for copyright. So uh, also with Wii Video, they have music in there and those are already um, you have the rights to that. So you won't get in trouble for that either, which is really nice. Oh, I've been waiting for this phone call for weeks and now I can't answer it. Um, sorry. And so I'll go ahead and share this video with you.
so with that one, you'll see it's just, you know, it was just a really simple, um, you know, examples of, you know, how to be kind, what are the right things that you should be doing. And so super simple. And there's, you know, somebody just grabbed an iPad recorded. So there was that one. Ah. And so then um, this one was the winner that uh, for the middle school category. And this was under the category of fiction short film. Um, happy testing. This one's really long, but I'll just kind of show you a little bit of it because it was pretty good. I really like this one. So you could definitely see how it when it starts transitioning kind of from like elementary to middle school, that film quality changes a little bit like with them, they had like their whole mascot logo pop up and everything. So the kids get really excited when developing these films um, and they have a blast, especially at the film festival when um, their films are shown, especially at, when they're announced um, as a nominee in a category. And so uh, there's so many times where we see some students that struggle academically, but when you provide opportunities like this, like they'll, they will truly excel and it gives them that, um, that platform to kind of tap into something that they may not do every day, but they're able to kind of experience and see like, wow, I could really do like media and film, like I could do, you know, graphic design or whatever. So um, that was our, um, winner for our middle school so they also like i said received a um a thousand dollar grant this one rustic ranch was is a documentary that was created from our high school um which actually is uh brackenridge high school uh they do have a media film institute there um my son is actually in the media film institute he's studying uh animation and graphic design um so they have really good videos like these kids really know their stuff they have an entire like mfi building like just specific to their program so i'm going to show you this one and you know you'll be able to see how the quality is really really nice ranch life therapy is pretty much getting away from your normal social media or office setting type therapy that you're used to seeing <laughs> Being able to be out here and get outdoors and connect with nature and bring as many people from the community and veterans together has been all the most help for me. My name's Fernando Guerra. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. My title here with the Rustic Ranch is I'm the co-founder and ranch manager. One thing in the military that a lot of people may not understand is that you never do anything alone. And then once transitioning now uh, it gets completely different. You're kind of thrown out to the real world, the civilian life on your own. And it was real hard to find my niche. I didn't know really what I was supposed to do after that. 
what we like to incorporate is getting outdoors, you know, throwing away your cell phone, throwing away your keys. I would say it's just a different experience. You know, a lot of it is bonding with the horses, getting to know them. They all come with their own trauma. It's been a great escape for me, just traumas that I've dealt with in my life is being able to come here and escape reality, right? Oh no. <laughs> if you leave a horse by themselves, they're gonna do whatever they want. They're gonna be wild. They're not gonna feel like they have any purpose. Come here, Clover. The same thing with the person, you wanna feel like you have purpose. So whether it's just getting out here, giving them attention, working with them in a round pin, riding them, getting them saddled up and working and cleaning their feet, just the way we maintain ourselves, horses need to be maintained. It's therapy for the horses just as much as it's therapy for us as well. So um, so with that one, uh, of course, it was developed by a group of high schoolers. So really, really nice. Film quality is amazing. You can see the different shots, the different angles. Like, And um, I guess for us, what's truly rewarding is we're able to see how some of these young filmmakers, there's, uh, there's one person that I have in mind in particular, how they've kind of just progressed as the years have continued and you know where they started off at as an elementary student and you're now seeing them in high school, still writing scripts, still developing movies and you just see how much they've grown. Like it's, it's amazing. These kids are so talented. Um, here's an example of a elementary uh, newscast. So this was, yeah, a newscast. Hi, my name is Jude, reporting live from San Antonio, Texas. As hundreds gathered to honor and remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. His fight for freedom and equality and the rights for all citizens continues to go bigger each day. Walk around with me as we ask people, what does equity or equality mean to them? Alfred, what does equity mean to you? I think that people often mistake equity and equality. Well, we know that equality equals sameness, equity equals fairness. And that means that making sure people get access to the same opportunities as everyone else. Because in my opinion, we can't have equality without equity. Thank you for that answer, Alfred. Of course. Yvonne, can you share what does equity mean to you? Sure. Equity for me isn't just about social justice or justice in general. For me, equity is about all human beings being given the same health care, education, higher education, and career opportunities for better lifestyles. Ed, to me, equity is all about breaking barriers for all humankind. Thank you for the answer. You're welcome. So I will pause that one there. That was just another example so you can see some of the um, other things that are submitted. And I'm a little biased on that one. That's actually my son. So um, he did take that uh, award for the newscast um, award. He didn't win overall, but he did get an award because of the he was his was the top one for newscast. So um, ah, started over. And so here is an example. Um, Dr. DeSoto, I believe, won for the book story adaptation for elementary. And so here, I believe this one was turned in for the 92nd Newberry as well. So you'll be able to see this is a version of the film, but the uh, stop motion. Oh, ow, out. Hopefully this doctor can help me. I'm in so much pain. I cannot treat you, read my sign. Please! Dr. DeSoto talks to his wife. That poor fox. Let's risk it. Fine, go to the back of the office. Bless you, little hearts. I beg you to do something. My tooth is killing me. Sit on the floor, sir, and take and remove the bandage. 
Doctor Soto looks in his mouth. This tooth will have to come out, but we will make you a new one. Just stop the pain! Doctor Soto picks out his tooth and sends him on his way. Should I eat them? No, they've been so nice to me. Doctor Soto talks about what to do to the frog. How about a secret formula to shut his mouth? Will it work? Hopefully. We'll put your new gold tooth in, then we'll have a secret formula so this never happens again. Great! See, it worked. The fox gets up and gobbles them. Yummy! Yummy. Those mice were delicious. Anaya as Dr. DeSoto, Ileana as the narrator, Jasmine as Mrs. DeSoto, and Evelyn as the fox. We were looking at the... Yeah, so... Um, that one again not only did they win the category of book story adaptation in our um, district film festival they went to the 92nd newberry festival for the city and they actually placed there and i believe they won money for that contest as well so i mean it was really nice because they made one film submitted it into two and were able to win in both so um these you know super amazing uh, this one was a, let's see, and I'm looking at it because it's hilarious. Like this one, I'm going to show you the whole one. I watched it so many times. There was even like a weekend we were hanging out at my house and I told my husband and my friends, you guys got to watch this. So this is a PSA and this is on um, not texting on the, like no, don't drive while being on your phone. So the, the you'll watch it and then we'll see what you guys think about it afterwards. Sí, ese partido fue genial. Oye, Jorge, mira este mensaje de texto que me mandó María. Hey, Jorge, you should actually get home before you answer that text. Tienes razón, prometo no usar el teléfono otra vez. Está bien, hombre. Lo importante es que estés bien. Sí, pero debemos ser más cuidadosos a partir de ahora. Yes, we cannot allow that to happen again. So, um... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I always laugh at that one. I know it's not a funny topic. It's just they did the most when editing that. Like, I mean, just the creativity between, like, them digitally, like, placing their heads in there. Like, I mean, it's just, it was brilliant. Like, it really was. And so, um, also, obviously, you could see they were able to make it in Spanish. So we do have uh, films that are submitted in Spanish, and we do have judges that will judge them and everything. Um so, I mean, we go through an entire screening process because we have to make sure that it's safe. We have to make sure that nowhere in the video there's any kind of foul language or they're not discussing inappropriate topics. So, I mean, this year we had mm, like 180 something films submitted. And so, yeah, so it's a lot of work to go through all these and to develop all the rubrics for each of the different categories. But at the end of the day, I mean, when you see something like this, I mean, it's all the work is totally worth it. Okay, so then, of course, you finally go into um, the uh, production stage where your students will are actually ready to begin uh, filming. So a couple of things to make sure that you discuss with them uh, is what is the budget and what is your schedule, right? So again, referring back to that movie timeline. Uh, so, you know, make sure that you have a cast and crew who all is going to be helping. Does everybody know the role that they're going to play? Um, like, and what is it that they're doing to contribute to the successfulness of this finished product of this film? Uh, props, what all is going to be needed when filming? These kids are like super resourceful. I've seen them take like little lapel mics and like tape them to um, yardsticks to kind of make boom mics. So, I mean, they they will find ways to make everything work. So making sure that you have all the props that you need, 
communication um, is important. It's key. So making sure that you have a director or stage manager who's constantly communicating with everyone, letting them know what is expected, what is needed, what have we done, what's coming up. And then of course, constantly referring back to that timeline. Are you staying on track with the filming timeline that you guys created? Um, have you had to make any kind of changes or uh, did you come across any kind of you know unexpected you know issue that you're now having to um, problem solve and you know fix? So definitely getting your students to focus on the budget and schedule. Then of course you go into the film quality, right? So you want the film quality to be really nice. So definitely encouraging them to look at creating um, separate film shots. They don't want to move the camera around. I am one of those people that get crazy nauseous when um, there's too much movement. And so teaching them, you know, to one, keep that in mind, because then people can't really enjoy the film if they can't really watch it without feeling, you know, sick. So not to wave the camera around, um, plan it, you know, as a series of separate shots with, you know, of course you just uh, then linking them together, um, keeping the camera still, definitely recommending the purchase of a, a tripod. Um, there's some super cheap tripods that are available on Amazon. And then of course, talking about the filming angles. Um, I know we saw in that example that I showed you with Rustic Ranch, there were several different um, angles. There was some from the side, some from the bottom, there was some from the top, which led me to believe that they used some type of drone. Um, we see a lot of that with our students. And so um, just taking, showing them to, uh, encouraging them, I should say, to do different angles of while filming. And then of course, when um, getting in close, sometimes doing the zooming in actually kind of like will look really choppy. So instead of zooming in, actually have somebody, you know, holding that camera or holding that tripod and they're actually walking in and out. It just looks a little crisper and cleaner than trying to zoom in and out. Especially because when you zoom in and out with the device, um, it's gonna kind of, um, what is it, the, uh, the image will look blurry. And then of course, lighting, you know, basic cameras um, might not have such good lighting. So definitely finding, getting, you know, getting a lighting kit or, you know, filming outside or something like that where there's plenty of light. And then uh, you always wanna film with the light behind you. So that way it's, um, it doesn't affect the camera. So then of course your sound, um, so definitely encouraging them to be quiet and listen for a few seconds before you start filming because then it's easier to go in and edit, especially if you have to um, snip it, like take snippets out and replace them with uh, different recordings. That is something that I do when I'm making um, our videos here for our department. Uh, if using a built in microphone, make sure you're close enough to the device to where it can pick up on you. Um, make sure that you try to film away from distracting background sounds. I was doing a film a while back and of course, like at that exact moment, like a trash, like a, a, a trash, I would say a trash truck, a garbage truck passed by and like honked and I was like, great, now I have to film that all over again. So just um, making sure your students are mindful of the area in which they're choosing to record. So that way they have good sound, um, and then of course, going in and adding the soundtrack afterwards. And then the soundtrack or the voiceover, the music could be tricky. So what's really nice in Wii Video is it, uh, it allows you to actually go in and adjust the sounds. So if someone is talking and you, you have uh, music in the background, you can actually lower the volume of that music so it doesn't interfere with the voice of what's being said. So, um, those are just some of those tips. And then of course you have uh, the post-production where now your students will start editing. So this is where we start editing the film. So you add a couple of different things. Um, maybe there's visual effects within the tool that you're gonna use. So you start adding titles, um, transitions, like how it's gonna transition from one video uh, image to the next. Um, music and sound design. Again, some of these uh, ed tech tools that I had shared with you earlier, they already have 
some sound and uh, soundtracks embedded in them that are already copyright uh, copyright free, so you can use them um, easily. And then uh, cutting the film, so making edits that help it flow, making sure that it stays within a certain time frame, especially if the film festival that you're submitting to has a set time. And then, of course, pre-screening. So showing the film to the cast or the film crew or some family and getting just some feedback to where you can make some kind of minor changes. So that way they can watch it and maybe they'll say like, oh, you know, the music sounds a little bit loud in this area, you know, in this part, I couldn't really hear the voice, you know, so that way they can probably catch a couple of things or they could tell you if maybe the transitions are moving too fast or too slow. And so definitely having some form of a pre-screening where you're getting some kind of feedback. And then um, peer feedback and uh, peer feedback and audience share. So we we like to encourage our teachers to do a lot of pro we do a lot of protocols and we like to provide opportunities for the students to give each other peer feedback. Um, this critical friends protocol is one that we tend to use a lot. Uh, so if doing the pre screening, you definitely would have the group pre screen share their film. And then you would have um, the audience members who can either respond with an I like, with an I wonder, or an I have. So they can't just turn around and just be like, that film was dumb. Like, I don't like it. Like, it's got to be more than that. They got to give me more than that. And it has to be positive. And so they can say, I like. So the audience can share something that they like about the film. They can say, I wonder. So the audience shares wonderings and may raise any concerns they have about the film. So this would be like that moment where it's like, oh, I wonder if, you know, maybe it's a little bit too shaky, like it may make someone sick. So like, I wonder if it would be, you know, better to maybe film that part over. And then um, maybe there, maybe the audience member has an I have. So, you know, I have an idea like, oh, I have an idea. Like, what if you add this particular sound at this part of the film to really like give emphasis to what message you're trying to convey? So um, definitely incorporating some type of protocol. Now we use this a lot. So this particularly, it was just changing and adding in the word film. It could be for any group project that your students work on where they could give each other feedback this way. And so then, of course, you have to consider who's going to see the film. Um, is there something that you are going to host like a campus movie screening? Maybe you have a campus movie screening where a movie night where families are invited to come in and look. Maybe you develop um, a district film festival. Again, the 92nd Newberry contest is there, or maybe it's a film festival that the city offers. I know with um, CTE, the they um, they are always having their um, media campuses submit to different films. So it's just, you know, definitely keeping that in mind because you always want to make sure that depending on who your audience is, that the quality of the film is there. So at this point, I knew I was going to finish way before the two hours. Um, do we have any questions? I know two people dropped. I think, Miss Vada, it's just you and I at this point. Oh my God! Well, that is amazing. It's uh, it's personalized. It's class. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me give you a little bit about my background. Um, uh -huh. first year teacher. Um, okay. middle school, seven and eight, and one of the classes, one of the three classes that I taught this year was arts and audiovisual communication. Okay. So this just landed on my lap and I was like, this is amazing because um, the curriculum that I was given, it was for a magnet program that was way more advanced. So uh -huh. I kind of tone it down, but, but I did go into a videography uh -huh. and the feedback that I got from back from the students, it was that they loved it. So mm -hmm. I went all the way from where the videography starts in marketing and bring it down to like camera shots, camera angles, camera movements, 
they did record a commercial for a product and they edited it. And so I just touched the little basics of what you are giving out right here. Mm -hmm. And of course, yours is exploded in my brain. And it is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so when you yeah. were talking, I'm like, oh my God, we did that. We did that. We did that. Um, of course, yours is very organized. I'm very, as a first year teacher, I was scrambling, but it, it, thank you. Thank you for this. Yeah. It's amazing. I know that I was not able to attend yesterday's sessions, but you, do you give the other one on basics? Um, no, I didn't. Someone else did. But I will say that all of these sessions are being recorded. And so we will then be placing them kind of like in a spreadsheet or a document and emailing it out to all the attendees. So if there was a session that you were unable to attend, you will have access to that recording. Oh, that is fantastic. Because yesterday, I think it was the basics on this. And um, I know that I will also um, take advantage of this, um, that session. Thank you so much, Ms. Brandy. I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Doing. And then on the screen, you'll see my contact information. If you have any questions, um, my email is bmuddlekeen1 at SAISD. Um, I mean, the, the filmmaking is just, you know, a very small portion of what we do currently right now we're in the middle of writing a uh, curriculum for summer uh, our summer student program starts in on monday and our district doesn't really focus too much on retention it's more of like a summer camp and so it provides the students um opportunities to really like dive in and so we actually have some digital media pieces and uh, some ed tech enrichment and so we're developing units specific for grade levels so um, like, for example, second grade, everybody who's a rising second grader going to camp will be learning stop motion, how to create a stop motion animation using stop motion studio. All of our rising third graders will be doing computer coding. Uh, fourth graders are focusing on podcasting while fifth graders are focusing on filmmaking. And so we um, we really just really want students to you know, be able to tap into their true potential of being able to do something that's outside of their regular academic, um, you know, kind of area and uh, just kind of fall back in love with education, you know, like COVID hit us all hard and it kind of threw us back. And so it's just trying to find that love again. And, you know, I kind of always say this, that, you know, um, at the end of the day, there's colleges and companies who don't really look to hire employees based on like, oh, you really did well, you know, on those multiple choice tests, you know, that you took, you know, it's all about creativity and collaboration and, you know, being innovative. And so being able to provide your students with these type of skills that they could take with them outside of the classroom and into the real world um, is just a huge bonus. So uh, thank you for attending in the chat. I did drop the presentation for today's um, for this session. So you can go ahead and open it, bookmark it. Um, feel free to reach out to me. I will also drop in, I believe the sign in. There's a sign in for you to be able to um, submit. So we'll have your contact information. And uh, that way, if we have additional information to share out, we'll be able to send it out through here as well. Thank but thank you, you so much, much for I'm, joining. Yeah, I'm looking forward to attend to your um, um, the filmmaking um, presentation, uh, the whole um, show, the yearly one where they um, the awards that I, I want to watch that. I want to attend those. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I will definitely I'll leave a sticky note somewhere here in this chaotic mess of a desk. But um, it's uh, let me stop sharing really quick. So yeah, so um, it's a really big deal. Like I, we rent out one of the high schools and so we have it there in the night. Um, our superintendent comes and speaks. We have, you know, some people from the city that come. Um, we were gonna have um, Joaquin Gatero come this year and that was right around the time that he ended up being diagnosed with cancer. So he was unable to attend, but it's a huge thing. I mean, we have popcorn, there's awards, there's like backdrops. I mean, we have a whole like program where like every film is like, 
listed like we have um the drum line is playing while families walk in like it's a big thing like side note i got my first white hair this year and it was because of the film festival <laughs> but it all worked out great like i mean there was lots of uh restless nights with very little sleep because i was like this can't go wrong it's got to be great and so then uh the night of the festival we i think next year this year we had it in march and i believe next year we're planning to move it to early uh may um but i just told my husband at the end of it you know seeing the kids running up on stage and just you know seeing the families excited it's it's all worth it in the end but um i will definitely keep your information so that way uh, we can definitely invite you so you guys could see it and hopefully northeast can um be able to incorporate something similar in the future thank you i appreciate that uh, <laughs> great presentation and it just like i told you it just goes off my alley and it's it was so much fun to teach the students this and it was so much fun to like send them out in the hallways and record and um and they really enjoyed that that part of the of class so thank you very much yes thank you thank you both for attending and i'm sorry i don't have anything else to say so we are going to be able to end it early but um enjoy the rest of your day enjoy the rest of your learning there's tons of other um things going on uh, you may be able to jump in. I believe they're doing one right now, probably like on Dumio or Smart. But um, thank you so much. I'll stick around for a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank uh, you. you have a wonderful afternoon. Yes, you too. Thanks. Bye.